So um, what uh, you'll be required to do in the first uh, step will be in that first section is to uh, basically build the model of a synchronous generator on uh, PSCAD and um, enter the parameters of the uh, generator as given um, in the um, machine configuration. And uh, also um, the data is provided for um, the uh, ABR. So you will need to add the exciter on the machine. And um, then also uh, basically given you the uh, transmission line parameters, which are basically uh, in RL format. So you, you're given the resistance and the inductance of the line. And uh, also um, the transformer is basically represented also in uh, equivalent circuit format. So you only need to basically represent the transformer by an inductor. Right, so um, basically, so you'll have your generator, then you'll have your transmission line, right? And uh, the transmission line will involve basically those parameters and inductance representing your transformer, then your uh, resistance of the line and then the inductance of the line. And then the line is connected to an infinite bus. So that's a source and basically, uh, this uh, voltage uh, source, you basically, um, uh, the parameters are given to you there. Okay, so um, basically the base power, base voltage and frequency is given and uh, you're then you're required to, um, to build that system. And once it's, it's built, um, basically uh, you'll move to the next section. Um, which is uh, section two, where you'll be required to um, test uh, the system under transient condition. So what you're expected to do is to uh, apply a fault uh, at the terminals of the generator. And um, so it's a three-phase to ground fault, right? Three-phase to ground fault applied um, at the terminals of the generator. And um, the, um, the generator parameters are basically operating point that uh, you're required to set is given in this section. So you need to basically um, ensure that the generator operates at terminal voltage of uh, one per unit, right? So um, that's basically uh, entered inside the configuration of the generator. There is a one tab for uh, initial conditions. And um, you basically use that tab and you say you want your terminal voltage to be one per unit. And uh, the, second, um, the second um, parameter that you'll be required to enter there is um, the um, angle of the terminal voltage, right? So um, if you remember in your, um, machines to course, the, um, the terminal voltage angle basically depends on uh, how much power the machine is delivering. So that uh, you will see, I've, I've written a note here. Note that the generator, uh, synchronous generator in PSCAD is initialized by setting the uh, ge generator terminal voltage magnitude. So that you'll be required to set it as um, as one per unit, and then the angle. So the term generator terminal voltage angle is the one that that's going to determine that amount of active power that you um, you uh, have specified here for your for your assignment. So you uh, you need to demonstrate that your generator is delivering uh, an active power of uh, zero point six eight four seven. Um, active power and the reactive power is 0 0.9, 0 0.0912 per unit. So those two values basically will come from that angle that you're going to insert in the machine. So you will say as you, you change the, that angle, it's, re, it's entered in radians. So as you change that value, you will see that it will basically vary the power. So you need to set that angle such that you get this uh, specified power. 
that's given in the in the assignment right so um once um that's done inside the generator um or the other thing that i need to remind you guys is um when you enter in the uh, uh, machine parameters in the uh, in PSCAD, it will ask you whether you want it in uh, equivalent circuit or you want to enter it in machine data uh, format. So you need to select the equivalent circuit uh, format and you will see that it will enable you to basically enter those parameters directly in per unit, what I've given to you here. So all these parameters, you just enter them in, in per unit that, uh, that's uh, in equivalent circuit format. So ensure that you enable that in your configuration that uh, the generator parameters are, are going to be entered in equivalent circuit uh, format. Right, so um, once, um, and uh, for you to basically um, enter those in per unit, obviously you will need to have the base uh, values. So that's also entered in the mach machine configuration. So um, the base power of the machine and the base um, uh, voltage um, and uh, frequency, all that uh, you will have to basically specify. Okay. So um, I'm just trying to see what else. Um, so yeah, this is this is the base. Uh, power of the machine. It's 0 0.003 MVA and the base voltage is 220 volt RMS line to line. And um, also I've specified, so from the voltage and the power, you can work out also uh, your base current if required, you can work it out from there. Right, so, um, so once uh, the machine has been uh, properly configured, um, what you expected to do in this section two is to apply a fault at the terminal of the generator. And you will need to have basically uh, set up your meters to measure um, those uh, parameters that that's, uh, you've been asked to, to, to basically uh, show in your, in your report. So you're required to show um, the RMS line generator line current in per unit, and that's for phase A, right? You are required to, to uh, measure the RMS generator line voltage. So uh, you need to use um, the appropriate, um, um, basically uh, the way in which PSCAD measures the line voltage three phase. Um, you will see there is a way of doing that. Um, so it, you will tap off uh, basically from the from the line and pass it through an RMS um, block and basically measure the terminal voltage uh, in per unit. And uh, those last two parameters, P, Q, P out and Q out, basically, um, they are basically parameters that will come out from your machine. So inside the machine, uh, there are a certain parameters that you'll be able to measure. So you will set them as output variables. So P out and Q out, it will come out from the uh, machine um, uh, variable. And then you just need to plot it in, on, your, on your graph. So, um, so that's one set of, of results that you need to show. The other set of results is basically uh, the instantaneous state occurrence. So remember your instantaneous, instantaneous uh, state of currents are basically uh, also your line currents, right? So you need to place ammeters at the uh, generator output, um, three ammeters on, on each phase I, to measure IA, IB, and IC. And you'll be required to basically show the pre-fault uh, pre uh, and then the post-fault uh, response of the three currents, I, A, I, B, and I, C. So the, the fault duration of the short circuit is 400 millisecond, and you need to apply it at time, five seconds, after the generator has completed its initialization. So um, you will find that uh, in PSCAD, um, there are two timers in the, uh, basically, initialization of the generator. 
um, those two timers, um, it, it will have two variables. Uh, you will see that one is called source to machine. Uh, that's one timer that will be there. And another one is unlock rotor. So those two uh, initialization are basically, um, those timers are, are already set. So within one second, uh, the generator will basically uh, uh, initialize its, uh, its, it starts as a source. And then it, it basically, when, you, when that timer moves from zero to one, it will switch to basically machine mode. And the second timer will basically, uh, you can basically set it up as on 1.1 seconds and that uh, will unlock the rotor, right? So once you unlock the rotor, it's, it's operating as a generator. And um, so you need to let the uh, initialization transients to settle. That's why you see I've basically specified the four to be applied at five seconds so that basically we want the generator to, to have stabilized. So all three currents, I, A, I, B, and I, C must be constant by that time. And then you can apply the fault and look at how the uh, currents respond to the, to the three phase fault. And you're gonna show the pre uh, fault and the post fault on the same graph. And um, after that also uh, in these other set of uh, results, you're gonna show the uh, RMS line current, and then the RMS line voltage three phase, and uh, also the generator active and reactive power in per unit. So all that must be shown. So in terms of format, the um, you're required uh, to basically submit a report for that assignment, which will have an introduction, then you'll have background theory and uh, some uh, expected uh, theoretical graphs uh, in your theory section. Then the modeling section, you will basically explain how you've modeled your generator in PSCAD, explain how the, um, the parameters are entered and how the, the initialization of the machine is done, the t what are the timers you've used and all that must be included here. And also the how you've you've modeled the transmission line, the transformer, and the infinite bus. All that must be included here in section three. And the section four, you will basically explain um, the um, basically the um, investigation that you are doing. So that's uh, basically looking at um, setting the uh, fault, the three phase fault to ground. Uh, uh, on the at the generator terminal, and then displaying all the uh, response of the um, currents. So the state, the currents in the line I A I B and I C, and then the uh, RMS uh, values of your currents and terminal voltage, as well as the output uh, power Q power P out and Q out. All that must be shown in the simulation result, and you discuss your your results in this section also together with the um, uh, simulation results, graphs, and then finally you'll conclude your, your report. You'll have a section for the conclusion. So um, this uh, assignment is for three weeks. So um, try and basically work on it. Uh, you need to be reminded that uh, we having problems with students uh, uh, basically copying from each other. So please avoid doing that because uh, you are in final year now and uh, you want to graduate. You don't want to get stuck with uh, a, a case with the proctor when uh, reports are submitted uh, and uh, they copy from each other. And this goes for to the proctor and then you get a case and then uh, in the, your final year, you just don't want things like that to happen. So please, uh, each of you, you write your own report and um, your, you generate your own model and, and, and submit it so that uh, you avoid uh, such uh, kind of problem to crop up in your, in your final year when you need to graduate. Um, so uh, be professional and uh, we want a professional report at that level from you because you are graduating soon. So um, we want it to, to be in the proper format, the report and... Uh, and you need to uh, obviously explain your results properly and then conclude on the, on the, on, on the report.
So do you have any question um, on, on the assignment? Um, so um, I, um, my students that are doing Design 5 with me, they've worked with PSCAD so far, and uh, they've been able to use the PSCAD uh, uh, free, the, the free version of the PSCAD. I saw they've managed to, to use that free version. So I would advise you all, uh, to uh, try and, if possible, use the, the, the free version of the software uh, because the simulation is very simple, so um, it will support um, uh, the um, just the uh, this simple simulation. It you shouldn't be uh, having a problem. The alternate option is to uh, basically use um, so use uh, the team viewer. I think that's the one that uh, Conrad has arranged. So you log on to a LAN, uh, basically, computer, and then you basically run your simulation on, uh, on PSCAD from that computer, and, uh, and then uh, you can save your results and then basically uh, log off. So that's the other option you have, uh, logging on to the LAN computer and, and run the simulation, or I would prefer you, you download the, the uh, the uh, free version of the software, and uh, and then you'll have it on your laptop. You can you can work uh, in your own time, and you don't have to uh, uh, work with the LAN computer, which uh, you have to share with other students. And then you find that someone has logged on and it, and kept it on, and you can't access that terminal. So it becomes a problem for you. So try and. Um, Get assistance. My students in Design Five they've used it, so they hadn't they haven't had any problem with the uh, with the uh, free version of the software. So um, if you have any problem, you can contact them and ask them how they've downloaded the software and they've they've installed it on their laptop so that they can they can do their um, their assignment. Um, any other question that you have on the assignment? Sorry, sir. Yes. Uh, is there a demonstrator that we call, can contact if we have any problems with this assignment? Uh, no, this one, uh, the only person you can contact is me. Um, there is no demonstrator for, uh, for, for final year students because you're expected to work uh, on your own. Okay. Okay, so... Um, so you'll be expected to develop your model by yourself and then uh, basically uh, add the uh, transient condition by adding a fault on the line and, and, and simulate the, uh, the machine basically with the fault. Um, so um, yeah, there's no, there's no demonstrator on this, uh, on, on this section. Okay, thank you. Any other question? Right, so the other um, um, point uh, I wanted to raise is um, uh, this month now we're basically moving into the assessment phase. So um, the, um, we've basically completed the, 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 the other section on the course where your test two basically will cover. It is basically covering um, the uh, section on the DQ model of the generator and uh, the uh, generalized uh, theory section as well as, um, so those sections, are uh, a test it needs to be written on this. So um, we basically have um, in the week, in the month of May, we have basically uh, next week, the 14th is a possible date for, for this test too. Uh, is that okay with you guys? Next week okay. on the 14th at 10.30. So we actually have a high voltage test that week. So maybe next to following week. Uh, you have a high voltage test next week? Yes. Okay. 
Okay, and um, um, okay, so I can set it on, uh, set it for the twenty first. Then is that okay with you guys? No. Okay, so it will be on the twenty first of May. You'll have your test number two, and um, it will it will start at ten thirty to eleven thirty one hour, and uh, and then you'll be given fifteen minutes to uh, to upload the uh, the solution. All right. Okay. Um, the um, the other so basically on the twenty first of May you uh, you will have your test two. Um, the twenty um, eighth of May your deadline for the assignment will be. Uh, uh, you'll have to submit your assignment on the twenty eighth. Then I still got another test uh, three that I'll run. So that's going to fall on the fourth of May. Is that co okay with you guys? Uh, sorry, sir. Yeah. Will you be able to put the test on a Monday, in the Monday lecture, please? The last test? No, the, the, the rest of the test, because it's clashing with another module, and that lecture is always keeping his test on Friday. But you need to find out whether he's going to run a test on the 21st. Yeah, but you see, the problem is he only, he only gives the test date the week before we write. So... Um, so, it, um, th th are you talking about uh, which course is, is that, Prof. Uh, Srivatsava? Yes. Okay. No, but that that one, um, it's um, it's not. Uh, um, it, it's just a few students. I think around three or four students that are are writing that course. It's a third year course. Um, yes. In case there's a problem, I can give you an extension. It's not a problem for for that. Um, uh, uh, so, um, the, um, because, uh, what you guys told me was, uh, on, on Mondays, uh, if I run a one hour test, uh, will that clash with other, uh, another course on Mondays? Because, no, uh, sir. the, um, the Monday lecture session is at 1220. So then you will write the test from 12.20 to 1.20 and uh, another 15 minutes to, uh, to upload. So is, is that not clashing with anything on Mondays? You don't, uh, have, a class, you don't have a class right after my lecture? No, so we're free from 10 past 1. Okay, 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 okay. So there is no lecture right after mine. At uh, so after that, uh, uh, one twenty, um, that you don't have a class after that. All of you. Yes. Okay. Okay. So um, I, I for me it doesn't matter. I, I the the test can be. So, for example, I can set the test on the 17th, Monday, test two. Is that okay? For all of you, test two on the 17th of May, Monday at 12.20. Okay, so um, the um, now the the other test. Um, so test two will be on the seventeenth. Then you will have your assignment due on the twenty eighth, and uh, the test three um, that's falling on the on the Monday of the thirty first May. No, 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 sir. Of May, there's many submissions of presentations and reports. Can we do it after that? Okay, let me just check. Let me just check. Um, because one thing I know for Design Five, we're submitting our final report on the 31st. Your final report on the 31st of May? Yeah, yeah, for Design Five. Okay. If I'm not mistaken. Okay. If I'm not mistaken. Right, 
I'm just checking. Um, but can I also check and confirm on my side? Well, some. Yeah, you can. You can check so so that I uh, yeah. I because once we we set the test, uh, we 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 don't want to change it, and then uh, you know the students yeah. complain that it's clashing or something. So we want to make sure. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, No problem, just check it. Yeah. So the lectures and on uh, so the week of uh, the week of the thirty first is the last week uh, of lecture, and uh, Friday is the end of lectures. Um, so mm -hmm. you see, um, um, I can put my last test on the the week after, just to accommodate you guys. So that will be on. Uh, on Monday, the seventh of June, the last test. Will that be? Will that be okay with you guys? On on which day, sir? Monday, seventh of June. So that's the week after the design. Yes, so that should be okay. Yeah, I'm just like, I'm just looking here because on the seventh of June we also submitting a final report for selected topics. Um, but I don't know. We can, we can. I don't know. I'm. I don't want to say that I'm preventing you from doing that. But on the seventh of June, we yeah. submitting a report for selected topics. Final report. Okay. Um. So um uh the design uh if if design is falling on 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 the monday 30 30th uh the yeah, option i have is uh yes uh, monday 31st and um uh, we can run the test uh on the friday that's an option you have the 4th of june Okay, I think there's nothing there. Right. Okay. So um because one thing so I, we'll keep... yeah, because one one thing on that on, on yeah, on the thirty first because since I'm also doing design three, it's both design three and four. Design three and five, I mean, on the thirty first. Right. Yeah. So you got to submit reports on the thirty first. So then we'll we'll keep the test and not we'll move it to the Friday. Okay? Yeah, for both. 4th of June. So that's the that's the last day of lecture. So we'll run the uh, the okay, test no problem. Um, on the last day. Okay. Right. So okay. test uh, test uh, basically uh, two will be on Monday, 17th of May, and test three, the last one, will be on the on Friday, 4th of June. All right. So please note that down. Um, so that uh, you you all know, um, I will also write it on on the course page that we finalized those dates, and um, because uh, yeah, we want uh, we don't want any clash with other other lecturers. Um, uh, in case um, those who um, who are doing uh, the course with Prof Srivatsava, um, in case he is running his last test on that day. I uh, will I uh, will make a plan for for you guys. No problem. Okay. All right then. So um, I will end uh, this session now, and then we'll resume at ten thirty. All right.